Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sir Vern, and I just watched a video um, from Solid Rev on YouTube, which I love his channel. Uh, go check him out. He's great, but he had a, uh, a neighbor of his. It was called something, Old Man Wants to Buy a New System to Play Old Games, something like that. But anyway, his neighbor just purchased a PS5 for $600 or so. And uh, anyway, he was talking about what games he's playing, and Solid Rev made a few comments, um, such as, you know, if you're just wanting to buy a PS5 to play older games, why wouldn't you just purchase a Series X and play games at higher, you know, more games at higher resolution, saying that, you know, Xbox has better backwards compatibility, and I wanted to kind of get into that. So, uh, I, I wrote PlayStation vs. Xbox right here in my little notes. This is unscripted, by the way. I'm just going to like kind of ramble and, and chat. But, first of all, let me say, if you have a Switch or an, any kind of Xbox or any kind of PlayStation, any console, I think that's great. Um, gamers in general, I, you know, I'm, are all cool to me. I'm, I'm glad that you, you have a hobby you enjoy. So, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt. But, uh... I have pretty much every console except Xbox One and up. You know, I have uh, NES, SNES, Genesis, um, you know, Dreamcast, N64, GameCube, PS1 through 5, 360, original Xbox, that kind of thing, and a, a gaming PC. So, anyway, uh, I'm going to get right into it. So, the first thing he said that I wanted to kind of go over. Um, th I guess this video is going to be kind of about what system you should buy. Um, and I heard him talk about a few things that I just didn't really agree with. And I want to see what uh, you guys think. But anyway, so let's. he started off by saying, why don't you get an Xbox Series X that's uh, more backwards compatible? And I kind of wanted to get into that. Backwards compatibility is a, um, to me, almost a non-issue when... when uh, Picking a current gen console, which would be what ninth gen PS5, Xbox Series S and X. I guess if you consider consider the S uh, current gen, but it is. But anyway, um, so backwards compatibility. I think ninety percent of the people will only play one generation older. You know, I think there's exceptions such as myself. I play, you know, NES games still. I play my PS3 actively. I play my 360 actively. So I don't think that uh, most people go back further than one generation. So when I hear people say backwards compatibility is better on the Xbox, well technically it is, but there are limitations that people don't talk about, such as when you put an original Xbox game into an Xbox Series X, that is, you're not playing the game from the disc. All it's doing is checking the license to ensure you own the game, and then it's downloading a version from Xbox's server. When those servers inevitably shut down, that's no longer a backwards compatible system. Unless they patch something or do something, it's not backwards compatible. I don't like DRM in any capacity. I don't like how you have to connect to the internet the first time you power up an Xbox Series X. As of right now, the way I understand it, if you buy an Xbox Series X without internet, you can't play games. That's insane. Um, I don't like CMOS battery issues. I think that's insane. But as far as I know, the PS5 can play every PS4 game with, a, with no CMOS battery issue. So um, anyway, so in my eyes, backwards compatibility is a non-issue when it comes to choosing a current gen console because most people bought PS4s over Xboxes. They sold a ton more, like three to one. So there's way more PlayStation owners out there. Um, I currently own like 150 or so physical PS4 games, and I think a lot of people are the same way. When you look at backwards compatibility, it, yeah, the, the PS5, it can play some PS2 games, just like the Xbox can play some Xbox games, original Xbox games, you know, digitally. The difference is you can't put a disc in that you have to go on the, the server and purchase the disc. Most people don't have a retro game library that they're throwing in there playing an original Xbox game. I may be wrong, but I don't think that's a thing. 
I think it's a better solution to buy an original Xbox and the disc like I have and play the game the way it was meant to be played. I don't think in 20 years people are going to be picking up their Xbox Series X to play an original Xbox game. By that time, the servers won't be available, probably. Anyway, I think that's dumb to look at backwards compatibility as a determining factor in choosing a console. Most people, If you're looking at backwards compatibility, more people bought PS4s, so more people would have access to more games by buying a PS5 because you ha it can play nearly every PS4 game out there. So if you own a PS5, you have access to a library of thousands of games already. So I think it's a better solution, to, in my eyes, to, to just have buy an old console if you want to play older than one generation and play it on that console. So backwards compatibility is a non-issue. So I don't give that to Xbox. Um, and here's another one that drives me insane watching a lot of these videos. Game Pass vs. PS Now, or how Game Pass sells the Xbox. I also think that is insane. I don't like renting games. Yes, I understand buying a disc. A lot of times it isn't a complete game with patches and DLC and all that, that stuff that I don't really want to get into right now. But I don't want to spend $180 a year on nothing. I want to own a game. I would rather, sp rather spend $180 a year, and I think that's the price of Game Pass, like Ultimate for a year. I would rather spend that $180 on a ton of games. Do you realize you can go to Walmart right now and brand new get $20 games for Xbox One and uh, I saw PS3 games there new for like $9 new, but a lot of them are $19.99 for PS4 and Xbox One games. I'd rather spend $180 there. Buy Fallout 4, Persona 5 for an example, Days Gone, a bunch of AAA games, hundreds of hours worth of content and own those games forever rather than spend $180 and games I think they come and go for PlayStation now they do I'm not sure about Xbox but that's insane you don't own movies on Netflix you don't own games that's like saying you have a big movie library because you have a Netflix subscription I that's crazy to me the, the one S is also crazy I can go ahead and uh, mention that why would you get a digital system that in 20 years becomes a brick because they shut off the servers, right? That's insane. Same with the PS5 digital. I would never purchase something that you can't put a physical disc into and use after the, ser the servers shut down. That's crazy to me. Um, so Game Pass, it's neat, I guess, for some people that don't care about collecting games or playing games long term. If you're just in the moment and you want to play a certain game, and it comes out for free, go for it. I would rather pay for a game. In fact, when games come out free for uh, PlayStation Plus, I think they give out like two games um, a month. If a game looks interesting, I go buy the game. I have no problem buying games and playing the games forever. I don't want a free game if it's digital. If you want to ship me a disc, I'll take it. <laughs> I don't want digital anything. I don't care if it's free. I don't want it. And I may be in the minority, and I, I think I am when it comes to that. So, Game Pass versus PS Now. PS Now, I'll just address that real quick. It's like a streaming service similar to what you would find with uh, Stadia or something like that. I think you can download some games. Um, but uh, I don't want that either. Um, it may be a secondary solution. Like if you uh, own the physical desk, disc and you play that uh, as your primary and you're on vacation, you can bring your laptop and play PlayStation Now. That's the only time I see that that's useful. Um, Anyway, that, I want to own my games, so that is a non-issue when choosing. Uh, games. Let's go over games. PlayStation is, is killing Xbox. This generation and last. Last generation was... I mean, is there anything, any game on the OG Xbox One, not the OG Xbox, sorry, the Xbox One, that you can't play on PC? I'm not sure that there is. The only game I was really interested in, and... Uh, I may be like talking down on Xbox, but I used to love Xbox. I was a 360 guy, and X when I saw the original Halo, I went and got a, a, an original Xbox like that day. I love Halo 1, 2, and 3. I still think Halo 3 is like a perfect shooter. I loved it. The Forge, the campaign, everything was awesome about that game. That's why I own a 360, and I own the Master Chief Collection on Steam. So I don't see the point. I think even still, 
There's nothing that you can't play on PC. There's nothing exclusive to the Xbox console. That is insane. The thing has been out for a little over six months now, and there's, I think the medium currently, as of this video, is the only game that you can only play on Xbox. That may even be available on PC, I'm not entirely sure, but I think they just announced that for PlayStation 5. I don't see, and unless, you know, I, I do, I know they're buying um, different studios and acquiring different, you know, studios and going to have some exclusive games in the future. Like when I heard the uh, Bethesda news, you know, that kind of broke my heart a little bit. But I'll just get Elder Scrolls 6 on PC when that comes out. So games is a no-brainer, PlayStation. I can name, a, you know, a few off the top of my head. I'm playing through Days Gone, Returnal. Um, I platinum Demon Souls, the remake. Um, Miles Morales, um, Horizon Zero Dawn. Until Dawn, there's there's so many PlayStation exclusives that just put Xbox to shame. Back in the, their heyday when they had the Halos and the Gears of War, I never put, got into Forza really, but I know that's a really popular franchise. They do have a few franchises, but they're aging. I don't see them putting out many new things. See if these, I think it was new, um, and people enjoyed that. But you see where I'm going. Games is just... It's just way more in PlayStation's corner. This generation, they're already selling two to one. Um, PlayStations are selling two to one to Xboxes. I, I honestly don't know why you would buy an Xbox Series X right now. I don't know unless you're going to use it um, if you didn't have a gaming PC and you're only a fan of aging franchises and older games, which there's nothing wrong with older games, you know, but I would rather have a PS4 over a Series X right now, any day of the week. Um, anyway, so let's go over um, the controller, right? Um, PlayStation really innovated this time. The DualShock 4 was a great controller. It also innovated with the touchpad and all that. But now you have the adaptive triggers along with uh, the haptic feedback, the, the speaker, the microphone. I think it's awesome how if your headset dies, which the Pulse 3D headset is also incredible. The 3D audio is incredible. If your headset dies, you can talk through and hear through your controller. Long gone are the days of the PS3 when nobody had a mic, right? Um, I enjoy social interaction with games. I think most people do. So the controller wipes Xbox off, off the map. Now, back in the day when like the PS3 versus the 360 controller, I loved the 360 controller, but now I'm much more of a, of a fan. Instead of the offset uh, joysticks, I prefer the parallel or horizontal joysticks. So anyway, the controller, um, innovation in general, goes to PlayStation. And we can go and touch on the, um, the look. I didn't write this down, but the look of the PlayStation versus the Xbox. First of all, if you're basing your console purchasing decision on the way the console looks, I think that is dumb. I just do. I think that's really dumb. Um, some people don't like the futuristic router look of the PS5. And, you know, they say, what, the router versus the fridge or the fridge look of the Series X. I think it's cool how Xbox embraced the fridge um, meme. To me, both look cool. I really like the Xbox, the um, kind of sleek look, simple design, just square. Nothing wrong with that. I really like the PS5 uh, design. I like the futuristic look. But regardless, you're not sitting. It's not sitting on a shelf for you to look at. It's sitting on the shelf for you to play. So if that's the reason you're basing your decision on the console, I think that's dumb. But you know, you do you. I don't care. Um, trophies versus achievements. I think trophies are better. I started off with achievements. Um, I think achievements are really cool that they added those. Uh, this isn't a huge one, but I just prefer that trophies have like a tiered system. I know some uh, achievements are worth more points, but I just love getting a platinum trophy, which if you're not familiar with this, getting all the trophies underneath it, getting every uh, trophy for a game. You platinum the game, you have a trophy like score. That's, to me, it's a, it's a be overall better system. Um, the power of the console. Um, Xbox is gonna get this one. It has, what, 12 point something teraflops versus 10 point whatever teraflops. The S I don't even hardly count. That's just like 
last gen power with our DNA two architecture. So whatever, don't get the S unless you you know that's all you can afford. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, if you have the choice between the Series X and the PS five, you know, if power is all you, all you care about, um, I still wouldn't go with that console. Look at last generation, the PS4 Pro versus the, uh, what was it, the One X, right? The name's really dumb too, but that should also not be a reason why you don't get it, but it's really dumb and confusing. But the PS4 and Pro versus the Series X, no, sorry, the One X. So the One X was way more powerful than the PS4 Pro, ran games better. What do you think sold better? The PS4 did. Power is not everything that matters, or all that matters. Sure, it's important to have good graphics. The PS5 has phenomenal graphics. So does the Series X. But if you have to have digital foundry, put it under a microscope to look for a, a dropped frame here and there, or a resolution that you can't tell by unless you're like sitting right next to the screen, it doesn't matter. When we play Mario, we're not worried that we can't see the pores on his face. It doesn't matter. I still play N64 games. Those look terrible by today's standards. Graphics are important, sure, but shouldn't be a determining factor when you know purchasing a console. So I think that's crazy. Um, I guess where your friends are should be a big determining factor in which one. So if you're, all your friends are on Xbox, go with it. You know, I'm I'm saying if you're just purchasing, if all your friends are split down the middle, right? This is a no-brainer, and I think most people would agree with me. Um, we, I mean, power, you can also argue that the PS5 has a much faster SSD hard drive. Not hard drive, but an SSD. It has a much faster SSD. Now, that might not translate much to games. Um, it might be, you know, two or three seconds here and there. But it has more, you know, speed. Whereas the Xbox has a little more power, like more fidelity. So you, you know, have better, little better graphics. Like I said, if you have to have a stopwatch or a microscope, who cares, right? Power is not should not be a determining factor. Um, I guess the only thing I didn't really cover is like uh, free games each month. You know, Xbox Live they may eventually get rid of that. Um, Verse uh, or the you know you pay for instead of I think Game Pass will includes like Xbox Live or Gold they call it. But anyway, you get like two free games a month with PlayStation and with Xbox. Lately. And for the past bit, um, PlayStation has dominated that, that department. The games are great. Like I said, I don't like digital games. I don't even accept those. I don't redeem them. I just buy the game. That might seem crazy to some people, but um, that's just the way I'd rather do it. I'd rather just buy my games. But I think it's cool that they're given you know, value with, with what you pay. I pay forty dollars a year for uh, PlayStation Plus. I wait till Black Friday every year, thirty nine ninety nine, and I buy like two of them. So I'm like two or three years in the future with it. But anyway, uh, this is just a quick video. I just heard Solid Solid Rev. He got a, I think he has both uh, now, the PS Five and the Series X. And you know, you'll hear people talk about uh, controller drift or stick drift. That affects every single console out. That's not. Um, specific to Sony, Microsoft, or Nintendo, they all suffer that problem. I wish they would fix that. Um, it's just, uh, you know, cheap parts, whatever. They all have their problems, um, pros and cons to each one. But I honestly do not see the point in purchasing a Series X right now, or ever really, if you can play them on PC. You know, I would rather spend the $500 towards a PC and people say, well, you need a PC, a PC that costs way more than that. You can purchase a PC pretty much for any price point. Mine costs two hundred and forty-two dollars. That's how much my PC cost. I've never found a game it can't play. Granted, it doesn't play them well, but I bought the PC, or I bought a used PC, gutted. It had, uh, you know, of course, the processor and some RAM, and I just put a graphics card and whatever, a bigger power supply in it, you know. Um, but anyway, ideally, I guess you would have um, a gaming PC and either a Switch or PS5 or um, a PS5 and a Switch. I wouldn't recommend the Series S or the PS5 all digital version, period. Um, I just wouldn't. But anyway, uh, just my thoughts. Uh, I love Solid Rev. I like his channel. Um, I just heard a few things and 
I just kind of was uh, thinking about it and I figured I'd make a video. So uh, once again, I'm Sir Vern. Um, I'll put a few links in the description um, or put my information in the description because I'm also on Twitter and a few other things. So I'll see you guys later.